And we have one more thing left that I have split into two small things, or one regular thing and one very small thing. All of what we've done so far, we talked about that last time, both the confidence intervals and the hypothesis test based on the t-test here are based on an assumption of the phenomenon that we are investigating, the population distribution of what we are studying looks like a normal distribution, behaves like a normal, like, means like the heights distribution is looking like a normal or the, the way that the watts come out on the screens behave like a normal or so everything is based on this crucial normal assumption. We're the only thing that we learned, maybe, 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 just n is large enough, a lot of what we do might still be okay. But the formal theory is based on the normal still. So let's just now for five, ten minutes think about a way to investigate this assumption. Sometimes we might use the normal also for probability calculations and then it would be nice to check whether it's actually close to be normal. So, this doesn't look very nice. This, these are my student heights. Can we answer the question, are these normally distributed? Well, the first naive thing to do is to make the histogram and compare with the best choice of a normal. I did that here. I, I made the histogram and I put in the, the normal distribution with the mean and the standard deviation coming from the data. Right, so I choose the mean and standard deviation from the data, and I compare. <sighs> Histogram of 10 observations is really difficult to use for anything. It will look very different from time to time. Had I 100, and sorry for the <whistles> last one being disappearing there. Here is a truly normally distributed thing. And again, uh, it looks pretty close, but then it's very difficult in a way to make, I find at least, the strong conclusion based on such a histogram. Many different distributions, even a normal doesn't fit exact, I mean, even something which is truly normal. Here I took 100 observations coming truly by using the randomized function, the R norm. Even that doesn't fit exactly with uh, the normal curve. Uh, on average, it looks nice, but hey, how can we use it? Well, a step further could be using this ECDF. We met it a long time ago without spending many seconds on it, at least not here at, uh, on the lecture. We could compare whether these are close. Again, I put in, I put in the best possible normal as a comparison. They look pretty close, maybe, or do they? Hmm, difficult, I would say. What we do is actually to transform. What part of the difficulty here is it's a nonlinear scale also. What we do now is I'm going to present you, you can see the subtitle, the QQ plot, which is where here is actually the same thing. This is, again, an ECDF plot with data, and they're comparing with the normal. Um, used in a case those hundred points. Here it looks pretty nice, right? These points seem to follow the right normal ECDF in a nice way. That is what the QQ plot is doing. It is sort of comparing the normal pattern with the data pattern, right? So we compare the data pattern with the normal pattern sort of in a way that they're supposed to be on a line. So we take the observed data and combining with the normal quantiles that they were supposed to follow, in a way. So we linearize, I couldn't say that, we make it linear, this comparison uh, of um, uh, the ECDF, the observed ECDF, and the normal probability function. And that is put into a function in R, it's called QQ norm, and we can make the line with QQ line. If they are pretty close to a line, it means they are normal, if not, they are not normal. Are these normal then? They are not on the line? 
It's difficult to know, right? <laughs> it's difficult to know how close to the line should they be and how systematic should they potentially deviate for me to conclude they are not normal. At least without having looked at tons of these as an experience, how could you know? I mean, you have no chance of knowing that. Ah, R actually has a nice little function helping us with that. Let me try to see. We should have the time to do it. Lots of time. Where did it go? Because there is a point in doing it. I didn't bring it, actually. That was too bad. Give me a sec. Uh, somehow I apparently removed it again. That was a bit stupid. No, actually, I'm, I'm, uh, I shouldn't do that. There's a high risk something goes wrong now. Let's uh, minimize that risk. Let me do it here anyway. Sorry for that. Um, what this function, go and follow, I, I will upload, it's, it's part of the note, so you can find the code there to how to do it. I'll, I'll right away go and put it into my slide, our thing, so, you, so it's there also. Sorry for I missed, that, I missed that one. The thing is, we have a bit of an R code that can produce, for instance, nine plots to us without, the, the, the thing is, when we get them first, we don't see the red, uh, the red, box here. We just get the nine plots. And what R has done for us is to take your data as one of the plots, the QQ plot. And then it produced eight other plots coming from real normal distributions with the right mean and variance, right? So you should look at the nine plots without, and you don't have the red mark, you don't know which is yours. You get the nine plots. And if you are not able, then you, you think, you look at the plots, is mine, can I point out the odd one here? So you really try to look, which one of these nines are the furthest away from the normal in my mind? You, dis you make the decision, you press the button, and if the, if the mark, when you then get the red one that tells you this was your own data, if that doesn't match what you chose, you have proven that your data is normal. Right? This is actually the same null thinking again, if you think about it. That you do uh, some repeated things, and, and if, you don't see, if you don't see a deviation worse than expected, then you have not proved anything. The null is the normal, the alternative is not normal, if you want to think about it. Anyway, it's not a formal hypothesis test, it's a bit visually based on those nine plots. It could be formalized, but we don't do it. Those QQ plots, the details of them are given in a method that I reproduce here. I'm not going to dwell on it because it's, uh, there are different ways of detailing it. It's the ordered observations on the one side and it's the expected quantiles on the other side of the plot, normal quantiles. So we compare with the right normal. The thing is, there are different ways to define which probabilities should be used to find those. This is really a word that I shouldn't use here. Uh, anyway, the naive thing is this one. The R uses either this one or this one. Let me not dwell on this. Here is the another example. Yeah, that's actually, that's actually the QQ plot thing that we finished there. Checking for normality. So I have one more thing, the last thing. 